So if you're looking at a Harley Softail or a Harley Touring model, I'm going to give you the five biggest differences between these two bikes. Now, I think these two represent this video perfectly. We have a 2021 Fat Bob. We have a 2020 Road Glide Special. And while there are some exceptions to the rule here that I'll touch on, I think these two specifically are going to give us a good roundabout details between the Softail and the Touring model. Let's go ahead and get right into it. Now, before we start, big thanks to American Biker here in Lassen, South Carolina for letting me come out and do this comparison between these two bikes. Now, full disclaimer, this is my Road Glide. This is a Fat Bob. Here's the thing though, I see the faults and the good things about my own motorcycle. I, I can admit these things. So as far as this being some bash fest against the soft tail, it is not that at all. Now, if you're new here, my name is Howard and welcome to the Headshot Rides channel. If you like what I do, consider subscribing and hit your notifications so you never miss a video from me. First thing I wanna talk about and one of the biggest differences is comfort. So with your touring models, you're gonna get big floorboards you're gonna get a more plush seat. And really that is highly dependent upon which model you get. But generally speaking, the touring models are gonna give you a better passenger seat and a better rider seat. You're also gonna get an upgraded suspension on the touring models. Now this being a special, it's actually has like an inch shorter suspension in the rear. But if you go with like a limited that has the tour pack and all that kind of stuff, you're gonna get that extra uh, inch of suspension back and it's going to be a more plush ride all the way around. With the soft tail, you're gonna notice a vast difference here. In the seat, in the pegs, these are standard pegs of course, and you're gonna get a much firmer seat and you're gonna get a much firmer suspension. This thing is built for taking on corners. It's built to go fast, but not be super comfortable at the same time. And by the way, if you stick with the stock seat on pretty much any soft tail, minus the Heritage, they're pretty much going to hate you. And they actually may end up leaving you for somebody with a touring machine because the passenger pillion on these bikes from the factory absolutely suck. Now, one good thing about it, with the soft tail frame, you have a mixture of mid-mounted controls and forward mounted controls. This one specifically has Fords. A soft tail might be a good option for you because you have that option both ways. That's gonna lead us perfectly into the next big difference, which is seating position. This is such a stark contrast. Now, I did put bars, KST spearheads on my Road Glide. Regardless, even with stock bars, most of your soft tail lineup, minus a couple of course, are going to have a very aggressive riding position. Again, it's built to go fast, not be super comfortable. Now, this is one of the, the more comfortable, aggressive stance bikes I think Harley makes. A lot more comfortable than the ST, the Lowrider ST. Uh, just my opinion there, of course. But overall, you're going to get an aggressive stance. If you like to ride the twisties, you're in the mountains, or you just like to ride fast, you do a lot of bike nights, maybe a lot of commuting, things like that you're probably going to love this, especially if you come from like sport bikes and you want a Harley, but you don't want to go full bagger. This is a really good option. And that power right there, even my Insta knows the deal. On the touring models, it is all about the comfort, baby. And again, even with stock bars, this is about seating position. It is about comfort. It's about putting big time miles on a big time motorcycle. That's what it's all about. That mix with the forward controls pretty much exclusively is going to give you the ultimate comfortable motorcycle when it comes to the Harley Davidson lineup. You have an upright position, very rarely, unless you go with you know taller bars that maybe come out to here, very rarely are you going to come across a motorcycle, at least a stock one, that's going to be uncomfortable. They are built for the road and they are built with passenger comfort and rider comfort in mind. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is lighting. So this is a very important thing to me personally. I know it is to a lot of y'all as well, 
the more lights, the better. I mean, you can go overboard, but with the touring model specifically, just straight from the factory, you're typically gonna get better lighting and you're gonna get more lighting, okay? And that is definitely a good thing. Now these two bikes have similar lighting in the rear, but when it comes to the front, you absolutely get more lighting and you actually have more lighting options if you go aftermarket with your touring models, depending on what you have. Let's say you have a, a, a fairing down here. Well, Custom Dynamics has lights that go in the fairings. You have lights that you can do on the upper fairing. You have lights that you can put on either side of the headlight. Point is your lighting is gonna be, in my opinion, loads better on the touring model than the soft tail model. That doesn't mean that you can't add better lighting on the soft tail, but it does mean you're gonna have more limited options when it comes to the soft tail. Next thing we're gonna talk about and one of the biggest differences that you're gonna find and one of the biggest reasons that I decided to not go with the soft tail and trade my Lowrider S in so quick is gonna be storage, okay? Now, this is perfectly illustrated again with this fat bob because whoever owned this previously did what they could to get more storage. They got a luggage rack. As far as bag options, there may be a swing arm bag or something, you know, options available, but straight from the factory, you get stretch saddle bags with the special. Even if you go with the performance bagger in like the Road Glide and Street Glide ST, you're gonna get standard saddle bags. You get hard locking bags on pretty much all of your touring models, right? You also have like your limiteds that are gonna give you the big tour pack. And of course, you can add a big tour pack to any of these motorcycles. Your storage is gonna be so much better. And I'll be honest with you, dude, there is basically never a time where I don't have these saddlebags full, whether it's camera equipment, tripods, gimbal, all kinds of stuff. Normally I even need more uh, storage, which is why I'm getting a tour pack for this thing right here, because it's just is capable of carrying so much stuff. And then if you are on a longer trip, right? And you need rain gear, you wanna carry a spare helmet, all that kind of stuff. You can do that on these bikes, but you're gonna to have to be a little bit more creative whenever you actually start to plan out your trips on a soft tail model. And most likely you're gonna end up wearing a backpack even if you have a nice big uh, bag like attached to the luggage rack back here, your storage options are super limited when it comes to the soft tail model. But let me tell you, these bikes excel in their respective categories really well. So the soft tail, if you are doing corner carving in the mountains, if you are doing bike nights, if you're commuting, the beautiful thing about the soft tail is you get the big motor and yet it's 150, sometimes 200 pounds lighter than the touring machine. So if you're not worried about the, 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 all the extra amenities in the touring models, the soft tail is a great option. They are made to go fast and they are made to be a ton of fun. The touring bikes, well, they're good at touring. They're good for putting down a bunch of miles in a day. One of the biggest differences you'll find most of the time is your soft tail models, you basically have a windshield. On the touring models, you get the fairing, you get the radio, you get all those creature comforts that you would expect in a big bike like this that you're not gonna get here. Again, there are some exceptions to that. The Lowrider ST is an exception. The Heritage Softail is an exception, right? But generally speaking, you're not gonna get as much protection on a bike like this. Now, it's not just about protection, it's also about how many miles you can put on these bikes, right? because when you have all this wind coming into your chest, it really starts to fatigue you over time. On the touring machines, you don't have that to worry about. So the ultimate decision is up to you, but those are the five biggest differences between the soft tail and touring models from Harley Davidson. I'd love to hear from y'all, man. What were some of the biggest factors for you when you were going to buy either a touring or a soft tail, or did you end up buying both? Because in a perfect world, that's the ideal situation. If you wanna support me further, man, you can do that through Patreon. We're looking for our first 10 patrons and there's some pretty cool perks that go along with that. Big thanks to you guys, see you in the next one. And as always, hold them down.